Hi, everybody, and welcome to the show, the show that everyone everywhere is calling Animals at Work. All over the planet, there are millions of animals that have jobs. Ah! This is the show that brings you the funniest, coolest, and most bizarre Animals at Work. Here's what we got for you. Logan's training to have the finest nose in the dog world. Midge the athlete faces the toughest race of her life. And Wally the worm stands up to the cows on the Fanimal's farm. Genius. But now it's showtime. No, don't eat the rocks, get the keys. Oh boy, come on, find, yeah, find them. Oh, hi everybody. You've caught me in the middle of a bit of a manhunt, but, well, actually it's a, a key hunt because I've lost my keys and Jack's trying to find them for me. Jack, come on, find the keys, find the keys. What? No, no. I said keys, not cheese. Ugh. While we keep looking, check out this career canine who enjoys the sweet smell of success, <laughs> or sewage. <laughs> First, we're traveling to Michigan in the USA. This is Logan, a two-year-old collie mix hoping to qualify for his dream job, helping to save the planet by sniffing out pollution. Logan is in training and has been for several months to be a environmental pollution sniffing dog. Ever since he was adopted as a rescue dog by Karen, Scott, and Ashley, he's been in training under the close supervision of his boss, Sable. <laughs> Sable's a role model for sniffer dogs everywhere. Sable is Logan's mentor. Sable, let's go, get to work. For the last two years, he's been protecting the environment by detecting raw sewage and detergents flowing into the water supply by locating them with his nose. Come on, come on right here. Right. Yes, right here. Right. 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 Make no mistake about it, this is very important work. Human pee and poo contains dangerous bacteria that can spread disease, so we definitely don't want it getting in our drinking water. And detergents? Well, they make fish ill, which can make us ill if we eat them, so we don't want that in our waterways either. The work that Sable and Logan are doing are gonna help people like me because it won't pollute the rivers and the, the lakes that we like to swim and fish in. Sometimes, in some parts of the world, due to illegal or bad pipe connections, there can be a problem. And when these problems arise, they need solving quickly. Using machinery, it takes well-trained humans three months to detect chemicals in the water. But why spend all that time doing something which Sable can do in as little as five seconds with his nose? He's been trained to identify the smell of pollutants brilliantly. He's so good, his bosses say he gets it right nearly 90% of the time. So Sable Sniffer is in enormous demand to find the bad chemicals, and more chemical companies turn to him when they have a problem. All this work means that Sable's been rushed off his paws, so now, to make life a little easier, he wants an assistant, which is where Logan comes in. Yes, under the supervision of Sable, Logan's become an apprentice pollution sniffer. It's a dream come true for Logan, who's had his share of problems in the past. Sable and Logan are both rescue dogs. We got Sable from a shelter, and we got Logan from a family who was having a little bit of trouble with him, because he was just too high of energy for him. Logan, no, no, Logan! That's for Blitz! Fortunately, his new family gave Logan something to put that extra energy into. And he's determined to follow in Sable's footsteps and make it as a sniffer dog. But there's a problem. Things happen and things aren't always perfect, so some days their little sniffer is off a little bit or something, so it may be that he could bypass something. That's right. Sometimes Logan's nose just isn't, well, on the nose. But the time has come for him to get his sniffer in gear. He's been booked for his first job, a genuine call-out with a real sewage threat. 
Some important city officials will be there, so it's vital that Logan performs. Since there's going to be some potential clients out there, we want to show them how good we've been doing with the dogs. We want the dogs to do a good job so that they go, oh yeah, we're gonna call them up next time we need something. This is serious stuff. So to make sure he's ready, this afternoon Logan will undergo the final stage of his training. The Contamination Assault Course! Here he'll have to prove that he's able to identify pollution odors. The stakes are high. With his dream job in the balance, Logan can't afford for his nose to let him down. This is the last training session before your big day tomorrow. Will he qualify as a super sniffer? Is everybody ready? Later, Logan attempts the Contamination Assault Course. And now it's those kids who love animals. It's the animals, yeesh! And here they are, our animal detectives. Sophie, Ben, Georgia, and Martin. Today the Fanimals are facing their toughest assignment yet. Helping their new friend, Wally the Worm. Wally is a farmer Yeehaw! at this farm in Kent. He shares his field with these cows. Wally gets on okay with the cows, but he wants to prove that he and his fellow worms are the real heavyweights of the farm, rather than the cows, who get all the credit. Wally's really proud of his job, and so he should be. He and his earthworm mates plow the farm's soil by tunneling through it. This means that the soil can circulate water and air better, which is brilliant news for the plant roots, as they love water and air. Of course, better plant roots mean lovely, tasty plants, which is just what the farm wants. In fact, worms are so good for the soil that even their droppings make it better. So clearly, Wally's job is important. But is he right in thinking that makes worms greater farming heavyweights than cows? He's got a theory that the combined weight of him and all the other worms in the field is heavier than the combined weight of all the cows. It's a big claim that needs some serious investigation work. There's one on this side. Which is why Wally's drafted in the Fanimals. The Fanimals have really got their work cut out. It's been a particularly dry season, and as worms need moisture to live, there may not be many of them around. Today, the Fanimals alongside the worm professor, Chris, will be doing the sums for Wally. When are we fine, we'll put in this water, and they'll be happy in there. Oh, I've got another one. They're going to weigh all the worms in a small area and compare it to the weight of the cows. He kind of tickles. OK, it's down to business. First, the Fanimals measure off a one meter square plot. Next, they dig a hole in the plot. Loving your hole, Fanimals. Next, the Fanimals find all the worms in the hole. So pull it apart with your fingers. Have a look close to the roots. There's one, and another one, and another one. The Fanimals have finally picked out all the worms, so it's on to the next stage, weighing the worms. OK, put them in. Wow, there's a lot there. 40 grams. 40 grams, that's quite a lot. 40 grams, that's not bad. Still got quite a few worms there from one metre. But hang on, the Fanimals have only weighed a small section of worms. To get the weight of the total amount of worms in the field, the Fanimals need to apply the worm professor's special formula. Here goes. OK, so if we've got 40 grams of worms from one metre squared, and the field is 44,000 metres squared. So 40 grams multiplied by 44,000, that comes to... That makes 1,750 kilograms of worms. Hey, thanks, worm professor. Now that's a fair old weight. In fact, that's more than the average car. So Wally now knows the total weight of all the worms in the field. But is his theory right? Who weighs more in the field? The cows or the worms? And in this field, there's 25 cows, and they weigh 11,650 kilograms. So that means the cows are the winners. Oh, that's awful news, Wally. So the cows have won. So the cows have won, <laughs> but just for today. Hold on. There's some consolation. But that's really because it's dry. If it was, it'd been a wet year, I'm sure there'd been more worms than cows. 
Ah, so when it rains, there'll be more worms, and Wally's theory is more likely to be correct, which is good news indeed for our wiggly friend. Thanks, Fanimals, and well done, Wally. You can keep plowing safe in the knowledge that you weigh more than the cows, as long as it's raining. And now it's back to Michigan in America. Two-year-old Logan dreams of being a sniffer dog. He wants to help put a stop to water pollution by locating contaminated waterways with his nose. He's been in training under the supervision of his mentor, Sable. But Logan's got a problem. Sometimes his super sniffer isn't so super. Things aren't always perfect, so some days their little sniffer is off. It may be that he could bypass something. And time is not on Logan's side. Tomorrow, he's booked for his first job, where he'll have to find a real pollution leak. Tomorrow really is a big day. Um, Logan is gonna get his first opportunity to be actually out in the field and do a field trial. This is big. So to try and make sure Logan's ready for his first day at work, this afternoon he's going to complete the final stage of his training. This is the contamination course. It might look like a nice sunny field with some plastic things in it, but it's much, much more than that. It's here that a pollution sniffer's career is made or broken. The course is dotted with various types of water pipe, some of which contain yucky pollutants. This one right here is uh, has human sewage in it. This one here is laundry detergent. So when the dogs get here today, they should be giving us an alert that there is something there that they've been taught to find. It's the trainee's job to identify which pipes are safe. This one is empty. There is nothing in it at all. And which will contain the harmful stuff. <laughs> yes, good boy. They're looking for detergents, wee, and poo. And how's Logan going to find them? Well, that's obvious. It's all in the nose. Dogs have one of the keenest senses of smell in nature. It's a thousand times stronger than yours and mine. Scent is the way that dogs recognize the world, which is why amateur dogs do lots of sniffing in their leisure time. It's also why dogs are perfect for a pollutant sniffing job if trained properly. But is Logan up to scratch? Well, we're soon gonna find out. This is what Logan's up against. Amongst all the pipes are three containing common pollutants. Detergent, human poo, and human pee. To complete the course successfully, Logan will need to ignore all the other pipes and pick out the ones containing the pollutants. He's been trained to sit as a way of alerting Scott and Karen that he thinks he's found something bad. Okay, students, this is your last chance before your big day to get it right, okay? So this is it. It's the big moment. Some words of luck from Sable. And he's off. Go find it. Mm -hmm. okay. Immediately, he's faced with a line of decoy pipes leading up to the first smell. He's doing well so far. There are no pollutants to pick out in this section, and he's passing straight by without distraction. He's reached a manhole cover. Check. But will he pick up a smell? He stopped. Is that it? And he sat down. That's it? That's it! Good. He's identified the first pollutant, the human poo. Sable knows there's no time for congratulations. It's straight off to find the next stinky pipe. Good. Logan's headed straight Good. over to the white pipe. Is he onto something? He clearly can't make up his mind. Yeah. Sable looks on with his heart in his throat. This is not the time for Logan's nose to let him down. What's it to be, Logan? He's made a decision. He's sitting. But is he right? Yes. Yes, that's good. Unbelievable yeah. stuff, he's yeah. done it. Yeah. He's picked out the detergent. That's a big sigh of relief from Sable. Two down, one to go. And it's gonna be a tricky one. Come on. Come on. But there's no Just stopping Logan now. He ignores a decoy pipe, good. and it's straight over to the stinky one. one. He's got it. It's the human pee. That makes it three out of three. Top marks for Logan. You guys did really well. Logan hit on all of the ones that uh, had the pollution in them. He did a really nice job. Not only has he passed the course, he's made it look oh so easy. And that suspect sniffer, well, it didn't let him down once. Sable couldn't be prouder. Our hero gets a wash to make sure that he's clean from all the pollutants he's had contact with. If they 
got any kind of uh, pollution on them, we wash it off right away so that it doesn't make them sick. <laughs> then Logan's mind turns to the real test. Tomorrow, he'll learn whether he's really cut out for his dream job. Later, it's Logan's first day at work. Will his sniffer be up to the challenge of a real call out? Oh, hey there. <laughs> um, I'm just waiting to get some makeup applied because even good-looking presenters like myself need a little bit of makeup. <laughs> Very funny. Anyway, here I go. <laughs> I just sit back, close my eyes. Makeup artist, I'm ready! Okay, guys, I'm ready. <laughs> what? <laughs> Give me that mirror. What? What is going on here? Hope you like the makeup. Love. Cheeky monkey? I hate that cheeky monkey! And now we're off to Shipley in England. Within this quiet town, on this unassuming street, behind this one eye, and within this furry coat, beats the heart of a champion. Meet Midge, the racing cat. Midge is a 13-year-old Moggy who has one eye and a need for speed. And this is Martin, her trainer, agent, and number one fan. I think she's got this spirit, you know, of competing like an athlete does. Midge's street races against Martin have earned her fame. She's appeared on TV, in the news, even in a movie. And right now, Midge's career has reached a crucial point. She's looking to take her racing to the next level. Today, Midge will be competing in the biggest race of her life against a top human athlete. But before that, it's a warm-up race with Martin. We're getting ready for a spectacular race between myself and Midge, and it's going to be tremendous. Just man against cat. You don't often see this. As part of Midge's training routine, they race here, in the street, almost every day. This is where we're going to start from. This is our usual starting point, the starting line. And once I put Midge down, I can tell you, the race is on. See if she'll go for it. All right, Midge. Let's go. Uh-oh. Looks like Midge is off her game. She's oh, clearly no. distracted by the thought of taking Oops. on a real competitor. Sorry, Martin, but it's true. She deserves more. Finally, Martin has Midge in the zone. Here we go. Come on. Come on, Come on. Come on Midge. Wow, that's insane. Midge is one speedy cat. She completely left Martin in the dust. That was a good race. She's in top form at the moment. I can't get near to her, you know. So having proved that her eye is on the prize, it's time to give Midge what she wants by putting a real competitor by her side. She's about to face the biggest challenge of her racing career. And that challenge comes in this very athletic package. I'm the fastest under 15 for sports hall athletics two lap in the UK. I can do the 100 meters in 11.3 seconds. That's fast. Looks like Midge finally has some serious competition. And as if things couldn't be more thrilling, guess what? Today's race will be taking place on a real running track. Midge needs to stay in the zone. There can't be any shenanigans like when she races Martin. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Record holder Matt will be racing on the outside lane while challenger Midge Meow will take the inside. On your marks, get set, go! Matt's off like lightning. Midge wanders out of her starting box. Matt storms down the straight. Midge has a little look around. Matt 
That's crossed the line! A great performance! Midge is going sideways. This is a catastrophe. Nice run, Matt, but unfortunately, the big event got to Midge and, well, she bottled it. Unfortunately, she didn't sprint the whole 100 meter sprint, but, you know, there are other times. Oh, well. Someday, Midge just might be the first cat to win Olympic gold or just finish the race. But until then, she still has her dreams and her races with Martin. It's not just today that animals have had jobs. In fact, history reveals that in the past, they've had even more amazing jobs than today. And here are those history's heroes! Hello again, Bumbleman here, Professor John Bumbleman, world-famous animal historian and part-time inventor. Oh, yes. I'm an inventor, and I've had a new idea. Eureka! It's a light bulb that turns on when you say Eureka. Brilliant. And now for some animals who have invented some pretty clever things, too. Electric lights, phones, even electric cars. Modern society is more than a little reliant on electricity. And it's an American with a bad haircut who gets all the praise. Benjamin Franklin is considered the master of electricity after discovering it by conducting experiments. But one slippery customer discovered electricity long before any scientist was on the scene. Meet our first inventor, the electric eel. A freshwater fish from South America which can produce an electric shock of 500 volts. That must have been a bit of a shocker for Mr. Franklin. Our next animal invented paper. Almost 6,000 years ago, ancient Egyptian scientists and their mummies started using papyrus as the first ever notebooks. They made their paper out of reeds and used to write records which were stored as scrolls. But the animal world had once again trumped humans as the true inventor of paper is... the wasp. Yes, since way back, this black and yellow fella has been creating paper out of the dead wood and saliva it uses to build its nest. And can they create some paper? The largest ever wasp nest was found in New Zealand in 1963 and was a whopping three and a half meters long. But buzz, maybe the wasps were trying to write a novel. <laughs> oh, Eureka! Oh. In 1879, the world went crazy when Thomas Edison invented the light bulb. Everyone spent lots of time congratulating Mr. Edison, ooing and eyeing at the wonder of not having to light gas lamps in their living room anymore. But Franklin wasn't the first to discover electricity. It was invented even before 1879. And the real inventor was... A glowworm. Who invented a very efficient light bulb in its stomach over 30 million years ago. What's more, glowworms' lights are also actually far more efficient than any of ours. While typical light bulbs waste over 95% of their energy as heat, a glowworm produces cold light almost without wasting any energy at all. Well done, Mr. Glowworm! So that's it for animal inventors through time. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to invent something to make my socks smell better. Finally, it's back to Michigan in the USA. Earlier on, Logan successfully completed the dreaded contamination assault course. You guys did really well. This is the last training session before your big day tomorrow. And took one step closer to his dream job, working alongside his boss Sable as a sniffer dog. And now Logan faces the biggest day of his life. City officials suspect that unwanted sewage is leaking into a water pipe. If their fears are correct, then Logan's town is facing a potentially serious health risk. Logan's bosses, Sable and Scott, have decided that this is going to be Logan's first call out. And the pressure's really on, as Logan will be working in front of important clients. It's vital that his sniffer is on the ball and up to finding any pollution. There's lots of pressure going on with Logan right now because there's a lot of new people here and we all want to see if he does a good job. Wow, this is big. Can Logan's training and desire get him through? We're about to find out. As Sable looks on, Logan leads the way through the fields towards the potentially contaminated site. He's clearly feeling confident today. 
Logan's very excited. We've got a few pipes that are coming up here in the distance that he is going to be checking. They finally reached the pipes. Remember, this is a real call out. No one knows whether the water in the pipes contains pollution. This is Logan's big moment. He'll tell us uh, by sitting with a sit alert if there's any of the stuff in the pipe. Logan, this is a big test for you. No one could be any more nervous than Sable, who wants to watch his young apprentice pull it off. Logan takes a sniff. He gives it some thought. Yeah. And then he sits down. Is that it? That means he thinks really? the pipe contains pollution. Okay, I believe you. But is he right? In goes the old pro to find out. Everyone awaits confirmation with bated breath. And would you believe it? Sable says yes. Logan's got it right. The pipe is polluted. This means that the pipe can be investigated and fixed so the pollution is removed and no one gets ill. Looks like we've got a couple of uh, positive hits, so we'll turn that over to uh, our contact here. All thanks to Logan, who's proved he has exactly what it takes. In fact, the new clients are so impressed, they whiz Logan over to the other side of town to get his opinion on another suspect pipe. If Logan does well on this, I think uh, Sable's gonna be very excited. This one's trickier because the pipe's at the bottom of a manhole. This means the water's further away, so some extra special sniffing is required. And this is an open manhole. Make sure that they've got sure footing and make sure the dogs don't step over the edge. But nothing's holding Logan back. He takes a sniff. And he sits. Remember, this means his nose is telling him there's unwanted pollution about. Again, just to be sure, Sable double checks Logan's work. And okay, confirms that he's boy. right. Good boy. Great work, Logan. Two out of two. Everyone's really impressed. Okay, everybody, that was fantastic. Logan, excellent job. They're not the only ones over the moon. Sable couldn't be happier. All that training he's supervised has finally paid off. We got something in this manhole, I don't know what, but. I see them as a real valuable tool. I think probably we'll be using them again in the future. And as for Logan, well, it's a dream come true. He's finally made it as a sniffer dog. Right, let's go. Congratulations, Logan. Now you can enjoy the sweet smell of success. He's getting a raise. <laughs> hey, Jack, that looks like one smelly and messy job. Do you want a position in that company? <laughs> no, I don't blame you.